Today I'm going to show you how we converted this old unused chicken shed into three brand new crayfish tanks to breed more of our red claw crayfish. And the good news is it was as cheap as chips. So the main two reasons that we chose this to be the location for three new additional tanks for our crayfish production here. Um, one is that we don't have any chickens anymore so rather than leave it to just go to rack and ruin um, let's put the crayfish in there plus red claw crayfish especially they don't like direct sunlight so with it having a roof already on top of it um, it, it made perfect sense to utilize that space the three tanks that we've had made in there uh, the total area is three meters by ten meters for those of you that are regular viewers of our channel uh, you're aware that we have a lot of tanks here on the farm. Uh, currently we have uh, 10 that are in full use as far as red claw crayfish go. We do have another couple of tanks that, that are filled up, but they're home to our giant snakehead and the Toons jungle perch. So um, yeah, the three new tanks take our total up to 10 tanks. We do have two other options available, uh, but they're in a state of disrepair. Um, our old jig tank, some of you may remember, that was an old uh, livestock uh, water trough that Toon's dad built many moons ago. So that needs repairing. Right then, on to how we built our latest three tanks. For this project, we used the hard working duo that we usually use, the tried and tested Nalur and Nalured. The first job that the guys carried out was to clear the old poultry shed, balance the floor, uh, that was after I'd snaffled as much chicken manure as I could possibly <laughs> squeeze into our vegetable raised beds. To date we're still unsure what to do with the old vermicompost tank. We may well convert that in some way uh, for taking care of buried females, we're not sure yet. Next came the delivery of the much needed building materials. To be fair, we already had quite a bit of leftover building materials from previous projects, but we got some additional blocks uh, sand, cement and stone delivered. Then the guys disappeared off the farm for a few hours and did several bulk loads of sand that had been washed onto the local roads after a recent flood. The sand was then spread out evenly, wetted and compacted, uh, ready for reinforcing. The boys then cut lengths of bamboo. We've got literally hundreds here on the farm. Um, we've got over, well, basically we've got over a hundred trees growing. So rather than buy metal in to use for reinforcing the concrete floor, uh, we went with the old tried and tested tie style um, where they, they split the bamboo into long lengths and tie it together. Uh, and then that suspend that off the floor um, and put the concrete over the top of it. It doesn't seem to be any issue at all. It's the same process that we use for all the other tanks um, without any dramas. The concrete mixing was all done by hand. The guys did a great job with that uh, and they poured it to a depth of three inches, uh, sloping to one side of the tank uh, where we had some sunken drain pipes um, previously put into there that ran outside of the shed. This makes it a lot easier for draining down, doing a tank clean and collecting your crayfish. Before the concrete floor was set, the guys then marked out the outline for the three tanks. Then it was time to start the block work. Only single block work, guys. We have done double block work previously on the initial tank. And although obviously it will be a lot, well, double the strength, I imagine, um, it's, it's over the top from what we've seen because at the end of the day, we only do these tanks two blocks high and then the water isn't even filled halfway. So you're looking at about four, four inches depth of water. So you haven't got any great loading on the sides of the walls. The boys inserted a little bit of reinforcing metal on the corners of the block work, but apart from that, that's all that was needed. Then it was rendering time. I love watching Nalur do this, it's very skilled. Gets a lovely, nice, uh, shiny, smooth finish. There's no chemicals added to this process. So there's no waterproofing additive. Um, what he does, he just keeps on buffing and buffing the, uh, the cement until it becomes a super shiny finish. Um, and that's good enough, we don't get any leaks. We then filled all the tanks with water. Uh, we use a combination of borehole water and water pumped out of our fish ponds. We add to that several old banana plants and leave the tanks to cure over at least two weeks. We left them for four weeks and it helps to balance the pH out. 
we then need to test the water we don't use a test kit we <laughs> we use live crayfish i think they're your best barometer now of course we don't want to use our biggest prized assets that we use for our main brew stock here on the farm and also we don't want to use them um, at a very very small size because obviously they're a little bit more delicate so we go for what we call teenagers or juvenile crayfish and uh, we add them to the tank so just a small amount to give you um, a, go a good reflection of if they're going to make it or not uh, we then watch them for a couple of days make sure that there's no fatalities this is a process that we always follow and the only time that we had an issue was the one occasion where we cut short this process by a couple of weeks and we lost over 50 males in a 24-hour period by the time we came down in the morning they'd all perished now fast forward now to the present day and the tanks have been here for some considerable time about six months now um, we've drained and um, collected the crayfish on two occasions and they seem very very happy in there very pleased with the progress the only things that we've changed I'll, I'll show you now the humming that you can probably hear that the camera's picking up um, can be put down to that solar panel there leads into here and um, we've now got an air pump running so we've got two air stones in each tank now our red claws don't require that much oxygen it's just that we noticed we were getting a little bit of biofilm in here and 24 hours after putting these air stones in um, it seems to have totally disappeared ah the old pumps revving up now that the sun's poking its head out from behind the clouds right then uh, the last change that we've done is is the habitat for all three tanks we've changed it quite considerably but I'd like to keep that for another video a uh, standalone video just on habitat for your crayfish because it's one of the most important aspects of um, crayfish husbandry is it <laughs> if you're thinking about getting into keeping crayfish I can highly recommend it it's immense fun they're fascinating crustaceans they're incredibly tasty as well so we we fully recommend it too than I do if you haven't checked out any of our other crayfish videos yet here or is it here is the full playlist of all our dedicated crayfish videos. Thanks for watching guys, take care.